eczema. Why hide your skin if you can help heal your skin from within? Depixin helps keep you one step ahead of eczema with clearer skin and less itch. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixin. Right now, it's just the beginning of this really adorable uh, romance. So Zendaya may have been talking about Peter Parker and MJ, but come on. Mm. Listen, we cannot help but love on Zendaya and Tom Holland's real life romance. And guess what, everybody? I will be with them tonight yeah. at their red carpet premiere. You cannot wait to see this movie. And I cannot wait to see what Zendaya wears on the carpet. Listen, y'all, a game coming. You moment. better believe it. Always a moment. Yes. All right, before we go, happy 81st birthday to a living yes, legend, indeed. Dion Warwick. And you know what? She is not slowing down at all. Nope. Even if that means she is working on her big day. I don't day. like that, but we do. Have now. City staff pushing back today against a damning report about their use of code enforcement to make people vacate their homes. What they say is wrong, and what others say is close enough. Temperatures running above average for a long stretch here this week, but we do have another cold front on the horizon. With it, some much better rain chances. I'll see you in a bit. If you're holiday shopping and you're out of ideas, out of luck, or out of time, coming up we have some out-of-the-box ideas that are always in stock. The News at 5 starts right now. And we begin with breaking news. City officials now confirming the first two cases of the Omicron variant have been found in Bear County. The new variant detected through a genome test being done by UT Health San Antonio. The samples collected from patients at the end of November and the beginning of this month. City health officials now urging anyone who's not been vaccinated to go ahead and get their shot, saying while milder symptoms have been seen with this variant, the vaccine does protect against more severe illness. This is health experts are showing concern that the Omicron variant is spreading quickly across the US. The new variant now confirmed in half of the country. In the last week, almost 40 states have seen an increase of around 10% or more in new cases. While health experts say the Delta variant still makes up most, almost all of the infections nationwide, the Omicron variant is spreading. The new mutation is now in at least 29 states. Preliminary data shows the variant only causes mild illness. Health experts are continuing to push for more people to get their shot. Preliminary data show that when you get a booster, for example, a third shot of an mRNA, it raises the level of protection high enough that it then does do well against the Omicron. Meantime, over in the UK, Prime Minister Boris Johnson confirming their first death of a patient with Omicron. He's now warning that they could be facing a, quote, tidal wave of infections. City staff pushing back today against a damning report that says San Antonio's code enforcement places displaces residents and demolishes their homes at a much higher rate than other cities. Yeah, that report is titled, quote, ousted the city of San Antonio's displacement of residents through code enforcement actions, end quote. It was actually published last month, but staff says the data is incorrect. The conclusions lack context, but our Garrett Berger tells us not everyone convinced of that. I believe this report was was uh, prepared with the intent to really incite controversy rather than help us. Whether or not that was the intent, the ouster report certainly has brought controversy. Found that over a five year period, San Antonio had a combined 626 orders to vacate and orders to demolish for occupied homes. That compared to only 16 between Houston, Austin, Dallas and Fort Worth combined. Staff didn't try to verify the numbers from the other cities, but they say San Antonio notices to vacate and demo orders for occupied homes actually add up to 404, most often for dangerous situations. We have un, you know, unsafe structural you know, things leaning. A second story could potentially fall on someone in and around it. We have interior conditions that are unlivable. Staff also say the city provides a lot more relocation assistance than the report claims, and they don't target specific communities. But the primary author, UT Law clinical professor Heather Way, says they went off data the city provided through open records requests. I definitely think that there's nitpicking going on here and that it really is smoke and mirrors. It's, it's that they're detracting, trying to detract from what the real issues are at hand here. An activist who spoke at a committee meeting before staff delivered their rebuttal found the report rang true. Our lived experiences tell us that our neighborhood is under attack. 
City staff say they want to commission their own study using city data, but at least one councilwoman asking, what's the point? I think we need to trust the community invoice, invo in, input and voice that has been coming forward for years highlighting this as an issue. The one thing everyone agrees on, though, is the importance of the issue. The question is what to do. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police still searching for a suspect that shot a man three times in front of his home. It happened in the 1200 block of Edison Drive just off Blanco Road about 1230 this morning. According to SAPD, a 36 year old man went outside of his home to investigate a noise near his truck. That's who was confronted by a masked gunman demanding to see the man's son. Police say the victim didn't speak English, didn't understand the gunman's demands. The suspect shot the man and left before police arrived. The victim taken to a nearby hospital in serious condition. The San Antonio Fire Department trying to find out what started a fire at a West Side food processing plant. It started around 930 last night on Merida Street near South Zarzamora and Highway 90. Investigators were able to trace the fire coming from a cooler inside the plant and they were able to put the fire out quickly. However, smoke damages to smoke damage to the building caused more than $100,000 in damages. No injuries were reported, and that fire is being investigated. A Pearsall man on the Texas DPS most wanted fugitives list has been arrested. According to DPS, 34-year-old Richard Bonda was arrested at the beginning of the month at a home in Dilly. Bonda added to the most wanted list back in October of this year. He'd been wanted since April of 2020 when he violated his parole. Bonda originally convicted back in 2014 for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, released on parole in March of last year. Police need your help. They want to track down two people who are accused of stealing credit cards. They were seen in surveillance footage trying to use the credit cards at a store near Evans Road and TPC Parkway. This comes after a series of car burglaries were reported in north and northeast Bear County. The pair also seen driving a Nissan Armada that was stolen last week. Anyone with information is being urged to call 210-224-7867. The holidays can be stressful, especially for those going through substance abuse recovery, and many are gathering with family for the first time since the pandemic started. That's why Blue Heron Recovery in San Antonio is hosting a one-of-a-kind holiday survival class. It's meant to help families touched by substance abuse prepare for a happier and healthier holiday. The class will talk about boundaries, communication, and making a plan for all kinds of situations that can arise. Not wanting people to bring up things that might trigger you, um, or if you're further along in your recovery, telling people not to be, not to have to walk on eggshells around you. Now the class is open to the public, not just people in recovery. It'll be this Wednesday, December 15th at the Los Patios Sober Community Campus at six. Hear more about this free class and how it can offer your family ahead of the holidays. And now to the deadly storm system that tore through the Midwest over the weekend. At least 40 reported tornadoes in just nine states. The death toll continuing to rise. Almost 80 people confirmed dead. The majority of them in Kentucky, which took a direct hit. ABC's Raina Roy with the latest from Mayfield, Kentucky. As the death toll goes up in America's heartland, we're learning more about those who lost their lives in the deadly tornadoes. Of the ones that we know, the age, the age range is five months to 86 years and six are younger than 18. You've lost your husband, wife, mother, father, children, somebody along the line. And what do you do? Where do you go? And so we just want them to know that we're gonna stay as long as it takes to help them. At least 65 confirmed dead in Kentucky alone, including 21-year-old Devin Burton and 36-year-old Joe Ward. Both were inside this Mayfield candle factory when it collapsed Friday night. The whole building fell. We are stuck. Please, y'all, pray for us. Just get somebody to come and help us. Kiana Parsons Perez trapped in that factory and pleading for help before being rescued. I definitely had my panic moment. <laughs> It came, trust me, but I knew somebody had to kind of be the voice of reason. Homes and businesses also flattened. Damage as far as the eye can see. Thousands left with nowhere to go. We lost everything. We lost our home. 
We lost all of our vehicles, uh, all of our belongings. Uh, we basically have nothing. Crews sifting through debris, cleaning up the mess left behind. So many facing tough conditions. There's no power, there's no natural gas, there's no flowing water. Six also confirmed dead at an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, with tornado winds up to 150 miles per hour tearing through it. The governor of Kentucky says it could be weeks until there is a final death toll in this state. President Biden says he will be visiting this disaster zone on Wednesday. Rena Roy, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And today we started out at 43, a bit of a chill in the air earlier this morning. By the afternoon, 67, which is pretty close to average. So today, fairly close to the average low and the average high. Eagle Pass now at 66. In Del Rio, we're at 70. Seguin at 64 degrees. And for the most part, we're just in the mid 60s. We have those low clouds overhead really inhibiting us from warming up much throughout the day today. Calm wind this evening. Becoming sticky out there. Dew points rising into the low 60s and get ready for some fog and drizzle pretty much daily the rest of this week. Also, in the extended forecast, a stronger cold front with good rain chances. More details on that in a bit, Myra. All right, thanks, Adam. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at stories that we are working on for 6 o'clock. First up, a teacher shortage. You've heard about the labor shortage affecting a wide range of industries. Well, teaching is no exception. In Edgewood ISD, the district is one of several offering pay raises to try to combat that. Alicia Beretta talks to some teachers who are even coming out of retirement to fill these vacancies. Plus. Well, it definitely tells me that people are craving, needing, and wanting mental health services especially kids and teenagers on the heels of this pandemic. A program to provide mental health services saw such a huge response. It's now expanding to more local school districts, and it's not just for students. Teachers, caregivers, parents can all benefit from this. How COVID has actually helped the conversation surrounding mental health and what services this program can provide. And a well-known name entering the race for Bear County Judge, that contest, it's getting crowded. We'll tell you who's now in. That's coming up on the news at six. Stephen Ursula. Thank you, Myra. New at five unconventional gift ideas. If you're concerned about your presence getting there in time or you just can't find what you're looking for, help is on the way. 12 in your size, Marilyn Morris, with some ideas that are out of the box, but also guaranteed to be in stock. Instead of toys or video games, Sarah Peterson suggests her relatives give her three sons something a little different. I like to encourage um, giving them something like a class. So they've helped pay for swim classes. My oldest, Isaiah, he wanted to do a play this year. So we just offered that as why don't we do this as one of your holiday presents this year? The time may just be right for unconventional gifts. If you're worried about getting your gift in time or being able to even find the gift, you could consider gift cards. You could consider online subscriptions. Um, it's not as impersonal as you may think it might be. Like signing up your busy cousin for a meal kit service. Many contain quality ingredients and easy recipes. Know somebody who needs a little more zen? Consider a subscription to a meditation app like Calm, Paziz, Headspace, or maybe a gift card to Spa Finder so she can book a massage. For the friend who loves fitness, a subscription to ClassPass gives access to gym classes at local fitness studios and online. There's nothing like the gift of knowledge. A subscription to Masterclass, Wondrium, or Skillshare let loved ones take online classes taught by experts in everything from art to zoology. For nature lovers, there's a National Parks Pass for $80. That gives access to more than 100 national parks, monuments, and battlefields for a year. If you're still struggling Struggling, you could consider donating in somebody's name. It'll spread the holiday cheer even further. And don't forget about memberships or passes to local places such as the Witty Museum, the Museum, or the Zoo. They always fit and they're always in stock. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. A local reverend honoring his mother, giving back to the community with a local toy drive, how you can help him make a kid's Christmas coming up. But first, how the city of San Antonio and the food bank teamed up to make sure senior citizens have food in their fridge this Christmas. That's coming up next. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Pam Hospitals. From the Pam Health family. 
Bringing joy to seniors in need is what the San Antonio Food Bank is doing this season. And they're doing it through a program called Convoy of Hope to help seniors not be hungry. In nearly 15 years, the city of San Antonio has partnered with the San Antonio Food Bank to deliver thousands of boxes of food to eligible seniors. For some of those seniors, life has gotten even harder during the pandemic. It means a lot because He's got dementia and I got cancer and we don't work. We're just living on a tight budget and uh, I'm, I love them so much. God bless them. Today's event involved city council members delivering those boxes for the holiday season. A local reverend honoring his mother, giving back to the community this holiday season. Reverend James Robinson hosting his 16th annual toy drive this weekend. And he's asking for your help. They're seeking toys like Barbies, trucks, remote control cars, and more. The San Antonio Police Association stepped up and donated bikes. People can donate toys at the Little Fish Factory restaurant on WW White Road until Friday. Look at outside with live cam. I hope you enjoyed the five minutes or so of sun that you got today. That might be all we get for the whole week. Pretty gray. Yeah, very, very gray. And actually get used to the color gray for the rest of the week, Ursula was on it there and it's going to be fairly cloudy here for the rest of the week and unseasonably warm despite the clouds. But with the low level moisture increasing morning fog and drizzle pretty much every day. So get used to morning dampness as well until we get to this weekend. And that brings us to our next strong cold front, which hits very early on Saturday morning. So let's get right to it. First, looking at our sky, there are those low clouds streaming overhead and you look at the current temperatures and close to average for this time of year 65 degrees, but the current dew point at 50 fairly comfortable outside over the weekend felt very fall like because of the cold front that hit and that dew point is going to be rising. So currently along the coastline, that's where we've got dew points at and above 60, but the wind is going to continually blow that more muggy air into place here and by early tomorrow morning we'll have dew points back up to an above 60 degrees. So get ready for this stickiness again. First thing tomorrow morning, it's going to feel sticky and muggy outside. Dew points well into the 60s and that's going to lead to some morning fog pretty much every day. Morning fog and drizzle and dampness, maybe a hundredth of an inch accumulation here and there, but that's about it. That's tomorrow all the way through Friday. Notice what happens this weekend. Dew points fall off. A direct result, of course, of our next cold front that's on the way. So let's talk temperatures and how they'll be changing. First of all, don't expect big changes for the next handful of days, but into the weekend, they're going to actually fairly uniform numbers right now across the state from 67 in Am Amarillo to 72 in Alpine, 79 Brownsville, 73 Laredo. Some locations that squeezed in some extra sunshine are a little bit warmer into the 70s, but 65 here in San Antonio and Hondo 67. Tomorrow into the mid 70s. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, upper 70s. If we're lucky and squeeze in a little bit of sunshine, we'll even make it into the lower 80s. So actually not far from record high temperatures later on this week. And then boom, the bottom falls out for Saturday and Sunday. We're looking at high temperatures, afternoon readings near 50 and into the mid 50s. So some fall like weather is on the way. We're just going to be way above average through Friday until we get another taste of fall. We had a few sprinkles along the coastline and closer to Houston earlier today. A lot of that not even hitting the ground, but decent amount of cloud cover, of course, sticking overhead. Here's the overall pattern. And the big activity right now is in the Pacific Northwest and parts of the Western United States, actually an atmospheric river big plume of moisture coming off the Pacific into central California. This is good moisture for folks out west, especially in California. They need this moisture. This system's going to miss us and pass to the north, but another one on its heels and some Pacific moisture is like to, likely to boost our rain chances for the weekend. So we could have a few sprinkles and with our morning drizzle all the way through Friday. Saturday, though, real rain chances. We're talking 60% Sunday around 40%. And of course, we'll be fine tuning those numbers and then get more into the timing of the rain and who could see how much in the days ahead. But right now, it's at least looking promising that we have some real and beneficial rain at some point in the forecast, which would be this weekend. Timing may not be perfect, 
but we could use the moisture. So tomorrow 59 in the morning, fog and drizzle by the afternoon, a few peaks of sunshine here and there. Mid 70s, a light southerly breeze, make it into the lower 80s far south of town, Catula, Beeville 81. Meanwhile, 73 in Leon Springs and 77 in Elmendorf tomorrow. Talked about those highs closer to 80 the rest of the week mornings well into the 60s with that humidity. Then bam, that cold front hits changes everything for the weekend with gusty winds Saturday. Thank you, Adam. What got into Jakob Pertl? Yeah. yeah, and Derek White. I mean, yeah. it's just a one-two punch yesterday against New Orleans. Now, keep in mind, the Pelicans are the worst team in the Western True. Conference. All right, so when we come back here, we'll show you how the Spurs were able to bounce back after being <laughs> just driven into the ground by Denver. And the Dallas D saves a day for the Cowboys. Coming up. After their demoralizing defeat at the hands of the Denver Nuggets on Saturday night, the Spurs bounced back last night by beating the New Orleans Pelicans in game four of their five-game homestand. Back and forth game in the first half, DeJounte Murray uses Jakob Pertl's screen to knock down the jumper from the top of the key. Pertl hits the boards, grabs the offensive rebound, tipping it out, and around the perimeter we go. Derek White to Kelvin Johnson, Lonnie Walker the fourth for the corner three. Now watch the execution of the pick and roll with DeJounte and Jakob that finishes with the slam. Spurs lead by two at the break. In the third quarter, Derek White now teams with Pertl with a bounce pass for the slam. It's still a one-point game going into the fourth where the Spurs break it open. White attacks the paint as part of a 7-0 run to start the four. Trey Jones corner three pushes the Spurs lead out to 11 points. Check out this move by Derek White. He goes baseline then out and back in with a nice spin move. He would finish with a team high 24 points tied with Jakob Pertl also with 24. Six Spurs in double figures in the 112-97 victory. I think it was an all-around solid game. Like We we were aggressive on offense. I think that was uh, something we were missing that last game against Denver. So um, I was I was pretty happy about that. All right, and they close out that homestand tomorrow night against Charlotte. Should say Wednesday night at 7:30. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys came away with a win in Washington, but what should have been a rout turned into a thriller at the end, thanks in part to mistakes made by star quarterback Dak Prescott. Had it not been for the Dallas defense, the Cowboys could have easily lost to a team riddled with injuries. With the return of Randy Gregory and Neville Gallimore, the Cowboys defense produced five sacks, nine quarterback hits. Two of those sacks were by the rookie Micah Parsons. His first forcing a fumble that resulted in a touchdown by Dorrance Armstrong, leading 27-14. It looked like the Cowboys had to do was just run out the clock in the fourth quarter until Dak Prescott failed to see Cole Holcomb, who intercepts his pass and returns it for a pick six. After a missed extra point, it's now a one possession game. The Washington football team gets a last chance to beat the Cowboys, but Randy Gregory gets to back up quarterback Kyle Allen, forcing the fumble and takes that chance away. Seals the Cowboys 27 20 victory. Great to have everyone back on defense. When you see all five of us down, they're going 5-0. I mean, everybody got opportunity when they're one on one. I mean, I think you guys saw the significance they made when they came back. I mean, Randy and D. Law both came over the sack, and Randy with the pitch. So, I mean, just having them back and them getting back in the swing of things, getting ready for this big run we're trying to do, is just only going to go up from here. Yeah, we're going to hear from Dak Prescott tonight on the night beat about the, the struggles he's had since that calf injury. All right, thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Get used to gray. That's the mantra this week. Morning fog, drizzle, and dampness every day starting tomorrow, lasting through Friday, but well above average temperatures. Humid. Mornings in the 60s, afternoons pushing 80 at times, then the weekend. Temperatures plummet while rain chances spike. We could potentially have some drought denting rain in parts of our area. We'll keep you updated. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.